Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video we're going to be designing this walk-in closet using the Home Builder Library for Blender. Designing closets using Home Builder is very easy to do. You can pick points to generate the room layout, add closet openings to the walls, then fill the openings with a variety of different closet components. Everything you'll see in this video can be accomplished using the free version, but I do have an extended asset library which gives you over 500 additional components that you can use. And every purchase goes to directly funding development of new features for Blender and Home Builder. Links will be in the description of this video if you want to check it out. But let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start out by creating the room layout. I'm going to do this in a top-down view. So I'll go and click here to switch to a top view, and then I'm going to use the pick points, and we'll... Go ahead and drag out the room layout. So I'm going to use 120 inches for this wall length, 120 for this, and then 120. So now we have this simple U-shaped room that we can work with. And we're going to go and switch to the closet category. And then here in the starters, we have all sorts of different starters that we can work with. Now I'm going to be creating a closet that is floor mounted. So I'll be using this tall starter here. And if we drag this into the scene, you'll notice that as you put your cursor over these walls, it will fill that entire wall with closet openings. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on this back wall here to fill that entire space. And then once we put one on this wall, you'll notice that it will recognize that there's a closet on this wall. So it's going to include a 12 inch gap here, just so it doesn't collide with any hanging units that are in that opening. I'll go ahead and just drag and place another unit there. And there we have it. So now we have our closet created. Now some companies will leave this just as an empty space, but there's other different ways. I mean, you could have used a, um, you know, L shelf unit to place in there. But if you click on one of the parts of the closet and go to the closet prompts here in the construction options, you can add a bridge section to the left or to the right. And so like if you're standing looking at this room, this is going to be the right section. So if I click bridge right, that will add in some additional parts that will just kind of fill that gap right there. And so let's go ahead and do the same thing to this unit here. For the closet. And then this is going to be the left section. Perfect. And also within the prompts, you can adjust the different opening sizes. So we can see that for this unit here, there's three openings. And in the closet prompts, we have three openings. And so you can change the width, height, and depth of these units. So let's say maybe for this second section here, we wanted to increase the height. And right now, this library is set up to use the 32 millimeter system, which is a pretty common construction method for closets to where all these panels are designed in 32 millimeter increments just to make the manufacturing process easier. And so here, if we change the height to be 90 and a quarter, you can see that's raised up just that one opening. And then if we wanted to change the depth of that, let's say we wanted this to be 16 inches deep, you can change the open or the size of that. Now, if you want to change the width right now, all of the widths are going to be equally calculated. So if you uncheck one of these options here, you can see you can adjust the size of just that opening, and then it will calculate the remaining space for the additional openings. But right now I'm just going to go ahead and leave these all calculated. Um, one final thing, there is the ability to change one of these from a floor mounted to be a hanging section. And so once you drop that down, it gets rid of the toe kick. And obviously the panel height is still the same. So that floor is just sitting on the bottom. And so if you wanted to, you can raise up that one section. And so there's a lot of different functionality, but for now I'm going to go ahead and just leave this back at its default and we'll keep it at all floor mounted for this. And just to make this a bit more symmetrical, I'm going to go ahead and make the same changes to this unit. So we're going to go ahead and use the 90 and a quarter option and then the depth of that will be 16. And here for this back wall, I want there to be three openings rather than four. And so if you click on any part of this and go to the closets here, you can change the number of openings. And so if we click on that, we can see there's four openings. We'll set that to three, click OK. And there we have it. Now it's just adjusted that to have three openings. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We'll go ahead and just change the height of that center section to be 90 and a quarter and the depth to be 16. OK, so now we have all the different openings laid out the way that we want in our room. 
And so now we can use these inserts to fill these openings with different components. And so here I'm going to go ahead and just put in some base doors in this center section. And then maybe we'll put some upper doors here. And it's just kind of a nice area that we can put any folded, you know, towels or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and leave that the way that we have it. Next, we're going to need quite a bit of hanging space. So I'm going to go ahead and use a double hang in this back section here. And then we'll put one right here. I'm going to keep this pretty symmetrical. Um, and so I'll kind of do pretty much the same components on the left and the right. You kind of have like a his and hers sort of, you know, situation to where it can be divided in half and you each get half of the room. Um, let's go ahead and put some drawers in this section here. And I'm going to go ahead and if you click on any of these components, so once you place an insert, if you right click, you can get access to the prompts of that insert. So if I wanted to change the number of drawers, I can specify that. If I want to change the drawer height, for that bottom to be eight inches, I can adjust that as well. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing in this opening here. So we'll go ahead and add in five drawers and then set that bottom drawer to be eight inches tall. And then we'll go ahead and use a tall hanging section right here. And then for an area to do shoes, you can use these slanted shoe shelves. And so maybe for the lady, she wants to have these slanted shoe shelves so she can have you know her shoes on display in some sort of a way. And then maybe on the gentleman's section, he'll want to use these cubbies. And so again, if you wanted to change the number of openings, again, you just click on any part of that and you can change you know, the shelf quantity and the division quantity. But I'm going to go ahead and leave them at the defaults for right now. And then we'll go ahead and just do another long hang section here in this final opening. And there we have it. So now let's go ahead and add in a floor. So I'll click on any wall in a room, right click, and then select the add floor command. And then we'll also add in a room light as well, just so we can have some light when we're doing our rendering. And I'm going to change out the floor from being this hardwood. Um, here, if I go to the home builder library, yeah, here I have some different carpet colors. So I'll go and use this gray color. We'll click assign and then just click on the floor and we'll just overwrite that one material. And also you right now that carpet scale doesn't look quite right. So if you go to the prompts, you can always adjust that. So here, if we change the scale to maybe six, I think that looks a little bit better there. And then finally, if we want to do a rendering of this, we can go and just switch into render view here, turn off the overlays and we can see our design. And obviously if we wanted to, we can, you know, adjust materials. We can change out the hardware. We can still continue to make adjustments. If we say that, um, here's turn on overlays again, maybe in the center section, we decide that we do want to change the width of this, maybe make it a bit smaller. You can, you know, make those changes after the fact and, you know, all the other components still remain parametric to where they'll change size and fill the appropriate space. But I think that's all I really wanted to show in this video. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I'll see you in the next one.